On what's up, world? It's your boy, Pink Excel. This is the Ride Dirty Show. We bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life, giving you what's next right now. Okay, I gotta start the show off by saying one time for our amazing sponsors. I gotta say one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse. That's right, Dr. Juice Cleanse, an all natural cleanser that does all kind of amazing and wonderful things for your body, like slow down the aging process. They can also help relieve stress, also can help you lose up to 25 pounds in just 10 days. Um, it also helps provide balanced pH systems for your body, um, removes mucus and toxins from your body. You know, a lot of times there are a lot of things in our body we don't know. It's not just blood. It's not just veins. No, the mucus and toxins in our body. Well, Dr. Juice Cleanse can help remove unwanted mucus and toxins from your body. You know, a lot of times, bad mucus and toxins can make your, your boo-boo stink really, really bad. It can make your breath be, you know, unbearable for other people. So do me one big favor. Do me a big favor and make sure you no, go over no, and visit. No. Go visit. Unbearable for other people. Go visit www. Do me a big favor. Dot. And make sure you go over. Go visit www.drjuicecleanse.com. Find out more about this amazing product and make sure you let them know Vic XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you. And I definitely want you guys to start living longer, living healthier, and, um, you know, just having a cleaner, 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 more refreshed life. All right. Again, make sure you visit them at www.drjuicecleanse.com. Dot com. Everything is spelled all normal. And make sure you let them know Vic XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you. Okay? Also, got to say one time for our sponsor, WMR Music Group. That's right, WMR Music Group. They are a marketing, promotions, and branding company. They do all kind of amazing things for your career. They have a six-week program for artists where they can help get your music to all the latest DJs. They can also help get your music to... Vlog sites, websites, A and R's, um, wherever you're trying to get your music, they can definitely get you there. They can help set you up overseas shows. I mean, they have a six week program that you can start seeing instant results. I mean, instant results by signing up with them. Now you can visit them and find out more about them at WMRResearchGroup.com, or you can definitely follow them on Facebook at WMRMusicGroup.com. Matter of fact, their Facebook page is very interactive. Um, you got people in there all day, every day, asking all kind of amazing, amazing questions, and they're giving dope answers. It's a great community. Um, do me a favor, man. Help take your career to the next level by visiting WMRResearchGroup.com and find out more about the WMR Music Group. And I'm no pick XL in the Ryan Dirty Show sent you. All right, I got a very dope guest coming on the show later on today, but I want to jump into this song, and then we're going to be back with a little news and views. All right? This is your boy, Vic XL. This is the Ryan Dirty Show. Bavle de taille, pas moi la gros, chaudi de taille, pas faire un jour, mais mes coups 
Before the show ends, all right. Today is Friday, October the nineteenth. Um, I gotta send some birthday shouts out. I gotta say happy birthday to one of the founding members of one of hip hop's greatest groups. Happy birthday to my man Prize Well. Prize Well turns forty six years old today. Happy birthday, my G. I also gotta say happy birthday to Chicago rapper representing that Chirac. My man Lil Dirk. Lil Dirk turns twenty six years old today. Happy birthday to him. Gotta say happy birthday. To the father of the money team. That's right. My man Floyd Mayweather Sr. turns <coughs> 66 years old today. And we're going to stay in that boxing ring because I definitely got to say happy birthday to the former heavyweight champ of the world. My man representing the ATL. His son right now is killing the field, killing the football field for the Georgia Bulldogs. I got to say happy birthday to my man, the real deal, Evander Holyfield. Holyfield turns 56 years old today. And let me switch gears real quick. Um, let me rock over here to my Facebook page and see what I got. Oh, got to say happy birthday to my man, KP the car man. That's right, KP the car man. Uh, man, KP has definitely been doing his thing for years um, on the marketing and promotional tip. My man used to rap. My man used to have it on Smash. I met KP when he was a very, very young guy. And um, he's still a young guy, but he's definitely doing his thing. Moving and shaking. Man, if you need a car, definitely holler at my man KP, the car man. Um, Kevin Powell is his name. Kevin KP Powell. If you want to follow him on Facebook, definitely, definitely got to wish him a happy birthday. And um, everybody who's celebrating their birthdays today, October the 19th, Definitely, definitely happy birthday to you guys, and hopefully you're having an awesome and wonderful day. All right, real quick, man, let me jump over into a little hip-hop celebrity news. Um, it seems like the brat, the brat, the brat caught a break, and she will not be getting locked up in jail for failing to pay the um, $1 million, actually it was $6.4 million judgment against her for um, from the victim who, uh, the former, um, Atlanta Falcons cheerleader, who she, um, you know, does some things to allegedly. Um, well, she doesn't time for it, but she would end up losing six point four million dollars in damages for damages and injuries. Um, well, the judge says she hadn't been paying it. The brat like she I ain't got no six point four million dollars. When the last time you heard me, I'm a hit record. Well, you know what? They're not gonna lock the brat up, and they're gonna work with her on getting this young lady 
paid some type of money. So, the brat, I'm glad you didn't get locked up. And um, man, six point four million dollars. I don't, 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 I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I don't know how the brat gonna come up with six point four million dollars. Uh, she's definitely doing her thing on Dish Nation. She's definitely doing her thing on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. She's definitely doing her thing on the Set It Off Play. But six point four million dollars is a lot of money. And Brett, good luck getting that. Um, seems like a little bad news for Philly rapper Mr. A. R. Ab. The feds are after A. R. Ab, and they say he push, he pushing weight. They say he's pushing weight, and um, they're. Hot on the tails of Arab says he is a major, major, major Philly kingpin, and he's moving major weight. So we're going to keep y'all posted, and y'all definitely stay tuned as more things develop on my man Arab. Also, caught thinking about losing legal battles, my man Chief Keith, you know, who is up on drug charges, um, he filed a motion to have it dismissed, and the judge was like, hell no, ninja, you got caught with that dope. And you going to get tried. So we're going to see what's up with my man Chief Keith. And see if he end up doing some time. Or if he doesn't. I don't know. Chief Keith. I don't know. Just say you got to come to court. So we're going to see what happens. Also, got to say one time for Netflix, man. Netflix definitely keeps it moving on the documentary tip. Be on the lookout for season two of the Hip Hop Evolution docuseries. And they're going to focus on stories of the two live crew, two short, uh, Tribe Called Quest, Wu-Tang, and many, many, many more. So we're going to see what happens with that. And, um, man, Netflix definitely, definitely, definitely keeping it going. And um, all I can say is, man, big things to Netflix. Um, there's a dope documentary if y'all haven't had a chance to check it out on um, Quincy Jones. That's really, really dope, too. So, hey, man, Netflix definitely, definitely got the hot musical documents out there. And, um, hey, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm a Netflix subscriber. And um, they definitely, 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 definitely. All right. So, let's see what's Also, got to say one time, my man Luke Luther Campbell, um, he's been honored and given the key to the city of Miami. And also, in development, is a Luke and Two Live Crew story about Luther Campbell's journey through hip hop, um, his fight for the um, rights of freedom of speech. And it's actually being developed by Mike Epps and his production company. So we're gonna definitely, definitely keep everybody eyes and ears peeled as that thing shakes down. All right, you know what I'm about to do? I'm gonna jump in this song one more time and see if I can find today's guest. It's like he's dodging me, I'm not sure, but the song is dope, so I really wanna talk to him. Um, Y'all definitely, definitely, Keep it locked right here on the Ryan Dirty Podcast, Ryan Dirty Show. What's up, everybody on Facebook Live? What up, Double A? What's up, DJ? Out of Al. What's up, Lady E Dub? Man, I see all y'all on the check in. Love you guys.
Je l'aime pas si Joe depuis pas c'est clair les stats. Et non pas gain avenir. Moi pas mando donc pas ba ma vie. Là je pour voir au fond moi la vie. Mais si gars mon nom là la rue oui. Mais si gars mon Dieu. Yo be out there. Pas moi là fort. All right, man, that was my man, Steady Technique, and um, I'm not sure what's going on with Steady Technique, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save all my good questions and all my good information, and we're going to try to get them on. Um, Y'all definitely up, up, just got them on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on the line, y'all just heard me run the joint. The joint is super five. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on the line, we got Mr. Steady Tech Nick. What's going on, my guy? Hey, hey, Vic, how you doing, man? You know, we live here, man, and Brooklyn trying to stay active, but hold on, we're getting to us. Pick up everybody having a hot weekend, man. Man, it's, it's going down. Man, I, I, man, I just, I just ran this song two times as I was waiting for you to chime in. The people are definitely, definitely feeling it. Um, let's talk a little bit about you, though, Mr. Nick, Mr. Steady Tech Nick. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're from Brooklyn, but tell us about yourself, how you came up, and 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 more about your Haitian background. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I actually grew up and spent all my years in Haiti. I just moved to in New York like a decade ago. Cause there's no music schools in Haiti. There's like there's no, I would say, no way, no way we could develop you and try to build you up. But um, I like I had to move on because there was no colleges over there. So I wanted to post like I wanted to really put myself out there, and I needed a bigger platform because I really love my culture, my roots, and I feel like they don't get enough love. They don't get portrayed right enough. And I really wanted to bring that to the masses. And what better way than to music and to the modern music that the kids and everybody else relates to. All right. Um, when did you fall yeah, in love? Mm -hmm. All right, when did you fall in love with hip hop? And when did you decide to become a hip hop artist? Um as far as this love in hip hop, I just it was just bumping around because my sister grew up listening to a lot of EDM, so I was a lot into that growing up. And then some French rap came on one day, and just the cadence of it, and the way that he was delivering and the word you were talking about, some story. It was, yeah, it was some little brother stuff, and they were like, "Our oh, little brother got a, you know, he got a little boy, and he got to stay off the streets or whatnot." It was really good stuff to me at the time, so that wasn't, you know. It was new to me, and it really, really hit me since then. And I delved in, started really studying it. And when I turned around 12, 13, I moved to in the mountains, literally. I mean, I had crickets and, you know, cows and chickens with me. <laughs> there was no other way out to cope with it, really, <laughs> to music. So I started writing a lot. Started writing a lot, really panning, getting into the music, dubbing tapes. You know, when we used to play the cassette things back then, we put your voice on them and overdub them. <laughs> we used to do the original mixtapes. And from then on, no, the pattern just keeps on growing. And I started engineering because, you know, putting my voice, there wasn't enough engineers in Haiti because it's not something that people actually do. Uh, making music in my country is actually taboo. You consider that something that, you know, people that have nothing to do better with their life to do. So I really had to get that um, stigma out as well to show them that there's really, there's a way to make a living and to better yourself to that music as well. Okay. Now, being from Haiti, um, how hard is it to get your music and your style of hip hop accepted? Um, well, in my country, I was rapping a lot in English. And quite frankly, they really, really dislike that. 
because they feel like we're trying to imitate. We're imitating a culture that's not ours. Then, whereas they were, that's the only thing we listen to in the radio, which made no sense to me. But if it's somebody else doing it, a Haitian doing it, all of a sudden you're not repping your culture, right? You're disgracing your culture. Um, so me and my friend that I met, that he works in peace, he's actually now considered a legend in the country. Um, we just, he, he was just doing that Creole stuff. And it sounded really dope because he wanted to do the English as well, and that's how we connected. And I was like, keep doing the Creole thing, and I'm going to mix my English with it, and let's see what we could make happen out of that. And then we dropped a song back then called Tickly, Lurchy, and it really works out. People really were playing everywhere in the streets. We were getting gigs a lot. I mean, it was great. And from that response, we started moving in, trying to do a real stuff as well. And I had my other artist that I work with a lot now, Steve J. He was having the same issue because he raps a lot in English. And as soon as he did the switch to Creole, the overflow, the response just became huge. And then from then on, we started making hits nonstop over there while we're here in the States. And then we're making a lot of hits over there in the Caribbean. The songs are getting played a lot. We're getting millions of views and listens. So I'm like, this is going good. So might as well try that as well on my side. Because doing the English, I, I do my gigs in New York. I do get a lot of love, but not as much that I would want. You know, the spotlight is not where I want it to be. So I just keep on striving and keep putting in work keep trying different things until I find the right button that actually, you know, to push and then make it happen. I definitely, definitely can dig that. Um, how hard is it finding the proper production to match with your sound? Um, so I have my producer that I work with a lot now. Johan, shout out to Johan. He's from Philippines. Um, I know a lot of Asian, I know a lot of Asian and listening. Yo, I got a lot of love for those people. Like, he's really passionate. Um, he's actually a jazz player. Since as an audio engineer, I used to work a lot with a lot of, uh, you know, jazz artists. And then we just started, you know, from jamming, you know, especially when they would jam a lot. And I would just hop on the mic and start spitting. Uh, and then yeah, from there, we just started, you know, building skeletons and that song. And then once you got in the studio, we started doing the record and putting the 808, doing everything. And then that's how we really started making a, really a lot of music. And then me, I would say that home too, because um, I do music for a living in general, so I would produce. I would just produce all the time, just, instead of just not only rapping, but really to develop my sound, I needed to really um, have me to be more in one, basically. So I would really, really dissect everything. I would that kick. I like how that um, 50 had that kick on that joint. So I would try to do the same kick and tweak it my own way. So from then on, I really just to really, move. Um, and then it became easy to just, you know, not only really, really, really integrate my yeah. sound, but other people's yeah. sound as well. Yeah. And make it um, okay. <laughs> Technique, do me a favor. Have whoever's listening to the interview in the background turn it down. We're catching all that feedback. All right, I'm in the street, All right, man, because I hear all the feedback. So look, um, how do you feel about the state of hip hop today? And, and tell me about tell me about the um your blank tape series. Blank tape was that as far as hip hop nowadays, um, truthfully, I think hip hop is in a good place. A lot of people might be mad so about that in some type of way. But um, we're actually the biggest genre right now. As of 2018, we became the biggest genre of music in the world. And unfortunately, it's due to trap. But then again, yeah, that no, same yeah, music, that, um, the mumbling as far as lyrics, but there's cadence in it. It's 
Mm-hmm. And then the people go and teach them through. Mm-hmm. And then at the day, we started hip hop with DJs and trying to get the crowd going. So that's the essence of hip hop, really. Um, then we started, we expanded hip hop into messaging, trying to talk about, you know, your story, your background. And it developed into a way to guard and to, into what we have right now. And then not only do we have the trap, trap is making a lot of money, getting a lot of exposure, but we got a lot of dope, real dope hip hop artists like Kendrick, J. Cole, you know, that are really making waves and people really look up to them too. So I think, especially with this year, Eminem, D, that this far, um, we're staying active. I love hip hop at the state that it's not right now. I hope it extends more. I hope the music lasts longer because unfortunately, as soon as you put out a hit by tomorrow, yeah, you like it today by tomorrow, you already forget it to the next one. Hopefully, they last longer. But apart from that, I love it. And then earlier this year, I actually released Blank Tape. Uh-huh. That's a collection of songs that I. Recorded in a day. I actually recorded it the day before I released it. I recorded and mixed it the day before I released it. Because I wanted to open up the new year with, with a bang, with a surprise. And I did promise the friend I was going to give him a product. And I didn't want to just give him a song at all. So I just decided to do a collection of songs and then just put them on a tape and just release it, see how they would vibe with it. And the reaction was great, truthfully. It's doing well. It's available on where you guys want to go stream it. It's on Spotify, iTunes, Google, Pandora, everywhere. All right. Um, what do you like more, being an audio engineer or being on the microphone? Both of them at first that I love. thing is I started out as being exactly behind the mic. So that will always be fun to me. But as far as really sitting down, enjoying music, getting in really inside the music, I find that with audio engineering. Especially I get to listen to the same songs hours, not only mine, but for the artists as well. So um, that makes it easier for me to delve into the music. Audio engineering is... It's not only art, it's technical as well. So I get to try out a lot of techniques, a lot of tricks that I want to do. It's really creative as far as you just like music in a sense that you can create and do your own thing and try to see what the effects were. But then behind the mic would probably be, if I had to choose, I'd probably go behind. All right, tell me a little bit about the name and why you chose the name Steady Technique. Um, actually, technique came from my brother. Um, it was to the Eight Mile movie when it came out. The, uh, 90 seconds. The movie, I was so hyped, I just started freestyling. And I had all my friends, my cousins there, my brother. And I just started freestyling nonstop. And when the credits ended, I was going still. And they're like, yo, you have a lot of techniques. Like, you're really, really good with it. And, yeah, as soon as they said it, I made the connection with my name, and then I spit it on the freestyle. And it stayed since then. 60 the seconds. Along the way, because people kept saying I was always steady, calm. It's always like, yo, you're really a calm guy, really a chill guy to be around with. Like, you're really steady. And it just stayed like that. And then from then on, it just stayed steady back then. All right, now, I got to ask you this. Um, on the freestyle, you just dropped a video to it. It's also available to check out on RyanDirtyRadio.com. Tell me a little bit about the freestyle and the video. Uh, okay, um, this joint was actually, um, as far as my creative process, I don't write as much no more because I could just go in the booth and spit. And then Lil Wayne dropped his album at the time. The Quarter Five, which was a really great piece of art. Ten um, seconds. There, he had a few joints. Um, I did a freestyle to a bunch of those joints. We did the beat. Because I heard the uproar. As soon as uproar came on, it gave me that feeling of that Rough Riders vibe. When I was just really, get, really, really just fully immersing myself in hip-hop. 
and just give me that 99, 2000 feel. And I was like, whoa, this is fantastic. And it, it's from an old song, too, that Lil Wayne ad that I used to like with J. Cole. And I'm like, yo, that sounds like a remake of that song. And it just stuck. And we, we did the beat, and I hopped behind the mic, and it, we recorded it. Sounded really nice. We were like, yo, let's shoot a video for it. This is way too dope to not to have some visuals. So we went in eight, morning, eight in the morning. About two weeks ago, we went to a, an abandoned airfield with the, with the raccoons and everything popping around. It was not good. It was quite dangerous, I would say, but hey, we made it happen, and it was really, really fun. We filmed it at 7 in the morning, actually. Real early set. Okay. And what's it pronounced? It was a fine, it was a, mm -hmm. Pronounce that word. Is it, is it Vakam? <laughs> Sorry? Vakam, yes, exactly. All right. This basically means um, shatters. A lot of shatters. People talk. Okay. Now, I have to ask you, who is the gentleman on the artwork for the single? The gentleman on the artwork for the single is actually a Haitian legend called Coupe Cloué. Um, he actually he does Tompa. It's uh, one of the genres that we have in the country that's really prominent. He left a step in Haiti as somebody that not an, he always spoke his mind. He always did his thing his way, his own style. He talks, he makes a lot of jokes in his song. He, and he had that cadence, and everything about it flowed well. Everything from the song that I was talking about, there's a lot of misogynist, too, which he was quite misogynist. But it's not in a bad way, but just really um, as far as, you know, the normal portrayal in hip-hop, and he was really like that. He was like a pioneer, I would say, in that sense. Okay. And then I wanted to really represent that. Okay, look, do me a favor, because we're about out of time. Um, please let everybody know how to find your website, how to check the video out, and how to find you on social media, and what upcoming projects you might have. Most well, definitely. Thanks a lot, guys, for actually staying in and really tuning into it. I really appreciate everyone that listens to the song, all the love. Really appreciate Vic for having me here, man. It's really a great vibe. I wish I could see everybody's reaction because me, I'm hype right now. You guys can find me, Steady Technique, S T E A D Y T E K dash N I C K, on all platforms, social media, on all social media, on Spotify, and all the streamings as well. I'm always there, always live, always representing my culture. Flossy, stand up, Kanashi, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, we're always doing it lively here, man. All right, my guy, do me one big favor and introduce that joint. Sorry? Do me one favor and introduce the song to the people one more time. All right, most well, definitely, guys. Please, thanks again for staying tuned in. And we're about to play Back On by Steady Technique. It's a movement. Appreciate it, my G. All day, okay. Les détails, comme la grosse, je suis des détails, je ne suis pas pour Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>
Tu sais mais ton grain sec tout fait Et là on need no egg Yo dis tes sec pour m'bec Ça v'le des détails Bah moi là en gros Je dis des détails La dépendance Du coup m'fin gâté Photo Instagram changé Je loue l'fin gâté Pour venir si j'en bombe Tombe Tombe Didi,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,ba,